speed Renee. As I said, I'm back. Back up, well, it's not been that long, but yeah, it's been a little long for me to be filming. Uh, in a week and a half away, and yeah, I'm back. Um, so today is going to be a mix of stuff, a bit of updates, and a bit of looking forward ahead. And uh, yeah, I don't think I thought about what to do today, but I can't, because I can't want to film something, and this is what it ended up being. Um, I'm not sure if you'll pick up on it, but you might pick up on me being a bit tired, or looking a bit tired maybe. And uh, that's because yesterday I went and saw everything over almost all at once, which was an um, interesting movie. Uh, but the thing was, it's a long movie, so by the time I was back, it was half past midnight, or half past... I always mix p.m. and a.m. Okay, yeah, anyway, it was half past twelve in the uh, morning, so it was half past midnight. Is that... So, um, you see what I mean. Um, but the movie, everything, uh, everywhere, almost all at once, it was so weird, and at time it was kind of times it was kind of strange, and well, kind of strange. At times it was very scary. Oh, I wouldn't say it was scary, but it was disturbing. So I wouldn't say I was <laughs> kind of afraid to get nightmares. So I decided to be awake a bit. So I didn't go to sleep until like two o'clock. And uh, yeah, and then I woke up early. So yeah, today I'm kind of tired. I did try to take a nap, but. You know, you never can sleep when you want to. You're always like tired or like full of sleep when you don't want to, or like when you're in the evening, but like when you want to take a nap in the daytime, it never works. At least you should not work for me. So yeah. Um so yeah, I did see that yesterday. And um, yeah, uh, I didn't really hear about it before like a few months ago and then everyone and the mom talked about how amazing and Original weird that movie is. They did say it was weird, so I did go into it knowing it was weird. And people, some people say that it, they felt like it was the best. I can't remember who, which re reviewer said this, but someone said that they thought it was the best multiverse movie. I suppose it's bound to have like comparison to multiverse movies because Doctor Strange just came out. And they're both out in the same year. Sometimes they're some places they're both out at the same time. I don't think think that Doctor Strange is still listening in cinemas here, but some place he's probably in cinemas. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so I I had some hopes and I was quite interested. And I mean, it has Michelle Yeo in it, and I think she's a great actress. And I really like how I kind of liked. Oh yeah, I kind of liked how it was a uh, uh, multiverse movie, but it wasn't like. From DC or Marvel, it was kind of his own thing. Uh, so yeah, I was curious, and I would say I had high hopes. Yeah, high hopes. And also, like a thing here in Norway, in Norway, when you reviews, do reviews, reviews, do reviews. That's what they do. Instead of saying like A for, uh, like saying that A, like the best movies get A's, we use <coughs> numbers. So one is the worst, six is the best. And here we know it, uh, everything all everywhere almost at once. I think it goes just six all over. Like everyone gave it six. Everyone like all the reviews I've seen has given six. So like meaning the best you can give it. So of course that kind of gave me high hopes as well and high expectations. And so yeah, um so going into a cinema yesterday I was full of expectations. Maybe too many, because I liked it. I mean, it wasn't bad. Honestly, I can't really say what... Other than describing it as weird, I'm not really sure how to describe it. My feeling of it. I feel like... I feel like I maybe... I didn't waste my time, but like, slightly that it wasn't... It wasn't the movie that I was expecting. Which, again, what did I expect? I mean, I expected something weird and different. I think part of my problem, actually, and <laughs> I just said I didn't know how to describe my experience with it, but I'm gonna say stuff, contradict myself. I think part, part of my problem is that a huge part of it is fighting, which is all well and good, but 
if you're fighting a lot, then you won't have time to develop the characters. And this movie, it's a standalone. Well, at this point in time, I suppose you could do spin offs and stuff. But, like, this is um, potentially a first, but there's, there's nothing before it. And I kind of, in a way, I kind of feel like. Maybe it would be better to like have a, have it as a two part movie and not as one because I like the potential and the ideas and stuff that they had in the movie, but I kind of feel like if you spent more time with the characters, it would affect you more at least for my sake. So like I watched it and I liked it, <sighs> but like and I felt the point that maybe I was supposed to cry and supposed to have like this and this reaction, and I didn't. And, um, yeah, I don't know. As I said before, I think it's basically a very weird movie. I think, at least I'm thinking, for my sake, I think I might watch it again. I won't watch it again in cinemas. I might watch it again at home, maybe. But I mean, it was just so disturbing. Yeah, it was weird and disturbing. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like I kind of regret watching it, but then again, yeah, I feel like, I suppose I feel like kind of like it was a weird movie, but it wasn't my kind of weird, uh, but do I regret it? I don't know, because I mean it had very cool parts, and I, I really enjoyed that the main characters, well I suppose you could also include Joyce the main character, but like, the couple were like at the, at the at the center, of the, I will say that there's the couple. I'm blanking out on the names, but like the couple, they're both. I want to say in the sixties, maybe fifties, and still I do all these fight scenes, which I really enjoy. Like most of the time, people in action movies are people in their twenties, thirties, forties. Very rarely in fifties. I mean, yeah, Liam Neeson still does, um, still does fight scenes, but like mostly. Action movies are uh, filled with people of younger, of younger, of a younger age. So seeing the age of these characters was quite fun and different. I like that. Uh, and yeah, I I like the setting, and I kind of like that some of the fight scenes have like well, some most of the fight scenes have like things you don't really think of as weapons, like the uh, but the but and that's um. Uh, bag that's used in the first fight scene. So excited, yeah, expected, unexpected. You don't really think about that at all. And um, yeah, I did like that. But yeah, all in all, I'm conflicted. I would say I'm conflicted. I mean, I, I didn't know like uh, Art of my had seen the movie before, and she said it wasn't her kind of movie, but she still like enjoyed it for you know in its own way. And uh, I suppose. I mean, she's not really a science fiction viewer, which I suppose for me, I like superheroes, but I don't really, really like, like that much science fiction, so I do watch it now and then. But I kind of think, I feel like this movie, you kind of have to have like a, be a bit into superheroes or science fiction to enjoy it. Like if you come in to completely like just to watch like a movie that's gotten good reviews, no, you can't do that. Because I mean, it is weird. It's weird with like science fiction elements, so you have to be aware of that going in and be up for that in that kind of mood. And um, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. And then uh, what else I have been thinking? Uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, you know, kind of little. Yeah, so that's kind of my so. <laughs> Talking my thoughts about everything everywhere almost at once. Not a waste of time. Uh, it's definitely weird and um, disturbing at points, but I really like aspects of it. And uh, I would say watch it if you're in the mood for something completely different. Because yeah, I would say it's completely different. It's not really a movie you can say like if you like this, you like this because it's so different for everything. I suppose, yeah, you can say it's similar to Multiverse of Madness because it has a multiverse in it. But it's just so different in so many ways that you can't really compare it. It's kind of like comparing, I mean, blue and purple. 
they're both colors, but they're different colors. So, I mean, the only thing they have in common is other colors, I would say. So, yeah. Uh, and then also, blah, 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 I had a point, didn't I? I feel like I had something about to say. Yeah, uh, someone, as I said, someone in a review said that this movie, Everything, uh, Everywhere, Almost at Once, was their favorite multiverse movie. And I suppose I kind of had that in my mind while I was watching the movie. And I would still, for me, it's, I mean, it's, it's not a bad movie, but it's not my favorite. I can't really say it's my favorite. I'm not even sure I really liked it that much, but, like, it's not going to be my favorite list, I would say, of the year or something. Uh, I would say still that my favorite multiverse movie is Spider-Verse Into Spider-Verse. Yeah, I, I love the Spider-Verse movie so much. Very excited for the sequel. And, um, yeah. I suppose 10 minutes for what that movie. Well, uh, let's move on to other stuff. I just kind of needed a move. And so, yeah, looking ahead to the future. So, yeah, as I said before, next week I'm going on vacation. So, this is going to be going to be long. Anyway, um, now I kind of want to talk about some things that I'm looking forward to that are happening soon or that has happened, but like soon or current things. Though, how do you define current? Like, isn't current things that are happening now or soon? So I suppose it is what you said. Anyway. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So, tomorrow I'm going to be watching 4, Love and Thunder. I love it. Can't wait to see it. Very excited. I've heard mixed reviews, but some people said, like, last day I saw... Someone said that they uh, would say that it's very much a comedy, and then there's some other things with it in it, but like mostly comedy. But I would say like I really I love the humor in Ragnarok and the humor for Taika Waititi. So I would say that I don't mind it being a comedy. So yeah, I'm just very excited to see it. Uh, for the trains it just look bonkers, and I'm excited, definitely excited. And I feel like. It's a second like he can I see the movie. I feel like either you're gonna love it or you're gonna really enjoy it. You're not gonna be like mad and you're not gonna be let down. I mean, even if you're not gonna love it, you'll still have a good, really good good time. At least in my head, I'm thinking. So yeah. Very excited. Uh, and then yeah, well, this is already out, it came up last week, but The Princess, which is that new movie that came to Hulu. Um, which seems like a very fun uh, twist on the princess trope, like the trope of princess being uh, helpless and can't do anything and she's just being sold off. This is um, a princess that knows martial art and just kind of fights her way through the whole movie, like against this evil dude. And yeah, it just looks very fun and yeah, it's violent but it also looks like, as always, it looks kind of dimply because. It look, just looks very fun, but also with the violent aspects, aspects. And uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to watch that soon. I mean, I won't have time like now, but I'm really looking forward to it when I get to it. So yeah, that's very excited. And you know what? Yeah, I had to move. I was getting like... I had three movings this video, but yeah. Um, so yeah, The Princess looks very fun. So excited for that. Different but so fun. So I'm like in one of the trailers, uh Joel King, the actress, said like it's uh, supposed to be like be on spin on the Rapunzel, which I'm not really sure how you I suppose I mean Rapunzel being one of my favorite hair tales as a kid. So I read the one I had uh, many times, so I mean yeah, most fairy tales have different versions of them. But the one that I read so there could be one out there that uh, is more similar to the one she's thinking about. Like, the one I read, Rapunzel isn't even a princess. She's just uh, the daughter of a, uh, of a farmer. And then um, a witch steals her. I mean, because of stuff, a witch steals her, puts her in, uh, in a tower. And then a uh, prince comes to rescue her. 
But like, uh, I would still say, like, I don't really see it being that similar to the princess, really. Or like, if you think Tangled in that one, I would say Rapunzel pretty much saves herself, like, not all the time, but often. So yeah, I have this gripe where people like still going around thinking that all printer stories are people being uh, helpless and needy and can't do stuff. I mean, no, you have Mulan, you have Jasmine, you have Tiana, you have uh, you have the Frozen Kids. I mean, all of these, yes, they're more recent, but all of these have princesses that are very much much capable. We're still talking about princesses that like like they are just kind of this. Group, group of characters that can't do stuff, that's very old-fashioned and, yeah, out of date, really. Very out of date. Um, I'm just throwing so annoyed people still think, like, that's kind of, like, how Prince is, which, no, no, it's not. Not at all. Uh, yeah, it annoys me so much. Like, for example, yeah, side tangents, but yeah. So last year, last yeah, I believe it was last year, The Legends of Tomorrow did an episode where... Not Tala, well, that's okay. Um, actor. Um, where Astra became uh, a Disney princess, well, they all became cartoons. And they talked in a review, no, in a promotion that, like, it's this fun take on, like, princesses and, like, how most princesses can't do stuff themselves. They have to have other people do stuff for them. And in this one, she had kind of had to, uh, like, Astra hadn't been used to doing stuff herself, so. In this one, she kind of learned to do stuff herself. And I'm like, have you seen any recent princess movies? None of them have a princess that's useless. Or like, yeah, I mean, supposedly maybe the writers don't watch stuff from like 2005. So, but like, even if you haven't watched uh, Tangled or The Princess and the Frog or Frozen. Though, like, who hasn't watched, watched Frozen at this point in time? Like, Mulan came out in 97. 97. Which is now, like, 20 plus years ago. So people who are writers now, like, adult writers, sh I feel like should have watched that, or at least, like, know of that premise. So, yeah. It just annoys me so, so much, this idea that princesses are just helpless. No, they're not. No, no, no. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, moving back to talking about things I can't wait for. Uh, then up next we have Maggie, which is a TV series coming to Hulu. Now, okay, so I have, I have this in plus. I don't have Hulu because Hulu is an American thing. Uh, now, a lot of things from Hulu, like come on the star, which is what kind of the, it's part of like Disney Plus for me. But, like, not all the things that are Hulu on Hulu comes on Disney+, Plus, so I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure how fast things will come all over the world. Like, Maggie is coming out in the States, to the least of my knowledge, in July, like, next week or something. But I don't know when it's coming to Norway, or, like, the rest of the world. But, like, for, like, How I Met Your Father, it came out a few months after it came out in the States. But, anyway, when it's coming out... I can't wait because it just looks so fun. It's it's a rom com slash sitcom where the protagonist is a medium, but it's not like made a huge deal. It's just kind of like her profession. It's a medium. People around her believe her. She is a medium. That's it. I mean, no one's going around making that a big deal. It's just kind of how it is, which just sounds cool and interesting, interesting really. Uh, but yeah, and then in the first episode, like in the pilot, she. She gives someone a reading, like she gives people readings for her job. Uh, and for once, she sees her own future, which she usually doesn't. And then she sees this guy, like, and then she sees her being pregnant with his kid, or is it? I mean, I suppose it's not so clear because if it would be so clear, I mean, I would just be boring. You have to have some ambiguity to it. But yeah, and then the next day she meets him, and then the day after that he becomes her neighbor. But surprise, surprise, he's engaged. So, like, I mean, she can't start a relationship with a guy because, I mean, 
First of all, okay, maybe this is the guy of my dreams, but then, no, we can't be because he's engaged, and I'm not gonna get, give, take someone else's fiance. So, yeah, it's kind of like this mystery, like, okay, so why did she see them together? And, and then, anyway, she starts dating, and yeah, it just sounds so fun and interesting. And yeah, I decided to read, watch that. <laughs> so, to read, watch that so much. And then, uh, in August, we have She Hulk, which I love. Seems so cool. Uh, like, I've read uh, some, actually, some She Hulk comics because I kind of want to prepare. Prepare, I have to prepare, but yeah. Uh, but then also, I like this is super aspect to it, but it's also a lawyer, a lawyer aspect to it. And I love lawyer shows, and it's also a comedy, a com comedy and it just it looks so cool. And yeah. I'm very, very excited for it. Yeah, just very excited. So, so excited. So, that's, yeah, kind of things that I'm looking forward to. Mm, yeah, I would say that. And then uh, next week, no, it's not next week. Or am I still bit? Give me a moment. Sorry, two weeks' time. Uh, in two weeks' time, there's a San Diego Comic Con, which I can't want to talk about, bit about, like, but yeah, uh, yeah, I do kind of get hit myself, but like, I love superhero movies, but I haven't like read all the comics, but read some comics, but like, I'm not in, like, hugely into the comics, but I love the movies. Uh, but like, I, I do watch people talk about comic books and stuff, and comic book movies on YouTube, so I like, I know stuff, even though I haven't watched the, haven't read the comics, all the comics. Uh, but yeah, so, Sandy and Comic Con. What do I want to happen? What do I want to happen? Um, I kind of want... I kind of want, like, super wise I kind of want to see... I think it would be fun to, like, see them announce, um, like, a cool surprise. Cool surprise. Like, announce, for example, that they're doing a team of... Uh, just a team-up movie with just female superheroes. That would be very fun. I mean... I suppose that's kind of what Captain Marvel, well, the Marvel series, the Captain Marvel sequel, but still, like, having a team-up with, like, I don't know, in my head, I'm kind of like, team-up is, like, five or six characters, and in the Marvels, there's three, at least, that we know of. Yeah, like, three main ones, three main ones, anyway. Uh, so I kind of think it would be fun to, like, uh, team-up with that. Um, but then, like, I just kind of think about it, and... I'm not really sure what I want, like, super wise But I do, like, hope there's gonna be some, like, like some fun panels, like... I don't know. Maybe, I suppose, kind of, it would be fun, like, if you... If they kind of announced, um... This and this char uh, character... This and this, um... What again? This and this... Actor or actress... Being involved in this and this, uh... Product, or, I suppose, also just, like, saying in general... This actor or this actress is come to Marvel or is in talks, that would be fun. Uh, though at this point in time, I mean, I love the actors that are cool and amazing, have some part of part of the Marvel universe anyway. Uh, but like, I'm thinking, you know, like Stephen Fry, or like, like, I'm just kind of thinking out of the box here. I'm thinking Stephen Fry, or maybe, or maybe like Colin Morgul. Morgul. Colin Morgan for Merlin, I think that would be fun. Well, maybe he's had it for like fantasy stuff because I haven't really seen him in fantasy stuff since that. But yeah, I think that would be kind of fun to see him in it. Uh, or then you could also have, um, you could also have, and I'm blanking out. I'm thinking, no, that's wrong. I'm thinking. No, I don't really know what I was thinking. I feel like I had an ID, but then I went away. Yeah, a nice brain. Um, but I do have, <laughs> I do have like uh some ideas. Like yeah, as I said, I kind of um I just kind of want like fun things to be announced, which I suppose kind of probably is the target for San Diego, San Diego Comic Con. Uh, yeah, I do also like San Diego Comic Con. It's it's not just gonna be superheroes. There's also yeah, I'm making stuff up here. 
Okay, I believe I might be wrong here, but I believe there will also be a Disney um panel. Maybe that's for this the this D23 in September. Okay, there might be a Disney panel. And if they do like a Disney panel of that like Disney talk, I think it could be very fun to like yeah, and I'm one of those sweet people. I kind of like the live action movies. Uh but yeah, I kinda think it would be fun to like if we got If we got actually this, yeah. So I just said live action. And I'm not thinking live action. Okay. So, like, yep. So recently, like a few months ago, uh, Top Gun Maverick happened. It broke well, a few months ago. It's not a few months ago. Anyway, this year, Top Gun Maverick happened. Broke all the records. And sorry. It's a sequel to a movie that came out years ago. It came out in the 80s, so now actually 40 years ago. So, I don't think, but yeah, 40 years ago. Uh, so, like, I'm thinking, like, kind of like, I suppose you, you can do sequels long after the first one. It's not like a rule you can't do that. And, like, this movie just had its 36th anniversary. My sister was born the same year, and yeah, I just love this movie. So I'm thinking, and also it's based on a book series. So I'm thinking, please do announce a sequel to Basil. I, I love Basil, the great Matt Mustative. It's just an amazing movie. And yeah, it's based on a series of books, but like, you know, I suppose you could still, like, you could, even if it wasn't, you could take the characters and just kind of make up stories with them. And yeah, I, and also it's a comic, so it's not like you, I suppose. Yeah, the cast in this one was very cool, and I love the cast is sadly now dead because it came out 46 years ago. I love them were old when they when they did it, but like there's still so many many people who are great voice actors, and I just yeah, I suppose yeah, it's a version of Sherlock Holmes which I also love, and yeah, I kind of I think it would be very fun to like if they announced a sequel to this one, it would be. Yeah, so fun. I mean, they're doing the sequel to Willow, so maybe I can do this also. It's um, it's an 80s property, so... And people always love Sherlock Holmes. And actually, just so recently, someone said that this one made them made Disney actually a lot of buck, even though it's not really talked about that much. I suppose it was it was uh, profitable, but it wasn't profitable, profitable enough, enough to get sequels, but like, a lot of these movies has like special DVD sequels. This one doesn't, and I'm kind of sad with that. And then, uh, yeah, in other in other talks, you can all, I can also have this all. Uh, la, 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 la. I also had this daydream of us getting some news that Pushing Doses either gets a movie or maybe like a short season three. I mean, all the cast in it. Are adults, so it's not like, and I want to say that most of the cast looks that much different now than when they did the series, and I just love the series so much. And uh, some people talk about how the second, oh, second, yeah, the second season and the cliffhanger. I don't really remember it being a cliffhanger, but you can remember like, I mean, the concept is they go around solving crimes, and it's just kind of this lovely weird world and so colorful like i feel like you can go back to this world and definitely explore more in it and just kind of yeah do more in it i mean yeah it's just amazing and yeah they did a weird um episode where they have norwegians with one had british accents one had um one had german and one had uh icelandic so that's kind of weird but still i mean even with that and i don't, don't really bother that much but I love this uh, see this series so much, and just kind of having more of it. I kind of want more of it in my life, and it's it's not based on a comic, but it's comic book ish. I mean, it's kind of that fandom five five feel vibe to it. So I feel like maybe you could have something announced at Comic Con, maybe maybe. Sorry, and uh, yeah. And then we have some more things. Uh, wait a moment. Yes, we have 
here we get because why not? Uh, but yeah, we also have uh, some books because kind of I'm mainly a book channel and a lot of movies, TV series are based on books. So this is again me kind of having a like daydream weird illusion that like if I talk about books online, some I mean if you talk about it online, like when you Google that book, you might show up and then maybe some. Uh, persons in a movie studio like like thinking hmm what are we gonna do next next and then they randomly find my video or randomly discover a book and then they think hmm does this book have a following or is that book this book interesting are people are people wanting movies of this book and they might see my face talking about how I want to do it and I want to do it I want the movies adapt adaptions and yeah so we have the Not Your series. Uh, so this is Not Your Backup. And then not, not Your Villain. I'm not sure because it's a series of four books. Okay, there's three books out at this moment. And I think the last, last book is from the fifth book. Okay, yeah, sorry. I think that there's four books at the moment. I haven't read the fourth book right yet. I think the last book is from the fifth book. Maybe the fourth book is the last. Anyway, yeah, so this is, as you can see, like it's superhero based, uh, but it's dystopian. It's okay, so it's dystopian ish. It's set in 2020, 2021, so 100 years from our time. Uh, so, like, people, like, it might be like a great grandkid of someone who lives today. So, like, so, like it's in the future, but it's not in the way future. So they, they still have they still have TVs and internet and live and stuff like that, but there's like some futuristic uh, elements to it. Uh, and like I say, it's dystopian because there's a mean government, but it's not like a government that says like you have to do this and this and this. Yeah, there's laws against like, some stuff. But I feel like honestly, I kind of feel like this is coming becoming more and more like the today's today's. American government because I mean they're bad politicians but like people who live no in reply but like it's not a Hunger Games level dystopian but it's dystopian ish in some aspects uh but like they I mean kind of the concept of this book is kind of serious is kind of to take down the government and that's kind of what you kind of need for dystopian so I suppose it is dystopian. Uh, but it's also so much more, it's not just that. And uh, yeah, all the characters are both diverse in sexuality, but also in ethnicity. So there's that cool aspect to it. And uh, it's just, yeah, fun to uh, take on uh, superheroes. And uh, it's, it's meant for kids, like for kids, uh, for YA audience. So it's kind of fun if they would adapt this because. I suppose you can watch for Love and Thunder and Guardians if you're a teen, but like, I suppose they're kind of movies meant for everyone, but it's fun to like see if stuff meant for you. I'm saying I just turned 30, but I'm, I mean, I'm young at heart. Not that I'm old now because I'm 30. Anyway, uh, yeah, I would still like, I very much hope that this gets adapted sometime. In the future, like, I mean, also, you have so many streaming services and TV places, like, there's so many opportunities. Please, someone, someone, decide and realize how amazing this adaption could be. Please, please, please. Yeah. And then, yeah, we have a bit, well, we have a few more superhero-based stuff, and then we have some other books that I want adapted. Uh, so, yeah, first we have Being a Jamie Baker. So, this is series being first one, second one, uh, and then last one. Uh, this is all about, well, it's kind of more standard, is this superheroes, but this, I suppose, kind of think X Men ish, because it's kind of X Men ish, I would say. Uh, but it's also, uh, it's also scene based, and there's a nice love story, and there's also amnesia at the end, which is kind of like, <gasps> but it's also kind of done in a cool, nice way, and uh, yeah, having this adapted, I think would be, yeah, very cool, you could 
do lots of fun with this one. I think people would love to watch it. So, yeah. This also needs, needs to be adapted. And then we have The Heroin Complex by Sarah Kuhn. So this was originally a trilogy and then became a, a septology. So like six books. But they can be read as, read as two different uh, trilogies, but it's in, in, in the same universe. I mean, you have to read this one first because the later books takes place after this one, so you would be spoiled, but yeah. Uh, it's superheroes, and most of the cast are uh, Asian-Americans, which is fun. And uh, and, they, and there's also aliens, so it's, uh, it's both fantasy but also science fiction, because a lot of the superheroes got the... Spoiler. Not that much. But a lot of them got the powers after a meteor, me, meteorite rain. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like science fiction aspect to it. But some of them have like, uh, like a born with superhero powers. So there's some fantasy aspects to it as well. And like in the fifth book, there's ghosts. So yeah. And it's just, I mean, you look at the cover, it just looks so colorful and wow, happy and happy. I mean, yeah. It's kind of colorful and action filled, and that's kind of what this series is. And yeah, a friend of mine described it compared to Buffy, which I would say it's not that far off. It's kind of there's action, there's things going on, but there's also romance, and yeah, it's just a lovely, great universe to be in. And it kind of needs to be adapted. Like, at least in my head, you kind of need to adapt it, please, someone. Please adapt this. And then we have Conventionally Yours, which, in difference to all the other books I just talked about, it's not, it's not a book with superheroes. Okay, so there's superheroes in these books, but none of the characters have superpowers. Uh, but it's it's about it's a romance set at a comic con, so they talk about superheroes and stuff. But I suppose this one is kind of more gaming based, like board game based, card game based. But still, it's a lovely romance. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you can't announce a romance set at Comic Con, at Comic Con, I oh, know when you can. And also, it's a romance. They're not that difficult to produce because you don't need all the high budget. I mean, someone please adapt this. It's a road trip of me. It's enemies to lovers. It's it's a great, amazing story. This needs to be adapted. And then we have the curse of the Spectre Queen. Uh, so this one came out last year, and then the sequel came out this year, like just a few weeks ago, actually. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of been described as Indiana Jones, but like female. And I would see, say it's quite true, because it's set in the 1920s, and there's archaeology or historical aspects to it. Uh, but like the main character is a female. And there's shenanigans, there's traveling around the world. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, very, very cool. I think seeing it on a big, big screen, yeah, honestly, yeah, seeing this on a big screen, not like streaming, but like seeing it be made by a studio and then put uh, on a big screen in cinemas, I think it would be amazing, it would just be so action-packed and just so full of great set pieces, and yeah, I think people very much love it so much, of course, if done right, but I mean, that's a given, really, for any adaption, and uh, yeah, those and then um, blah, blah, blah. maybe not feel that now. Um, and then yeah, um, kind of, kind of want to like do one last thing, but yeah, I kind of think I like me like because yeah, because they've been been less to talk about well talk and like lately there's been lots of like uh, a few weeks ago it was announced that Her Hercules is getting a live action adaptation. I actually decided to rewatch Hercules. Honestly, I like the songs in that one. It's it's kind of weird. I really like the songs in that one, but the movie itself, it's fine. I didn't really bother rewatching it. Movie like I ended like in ten minutes in because I wasn't bothered. 
but still it can be fun to like see it live action done live action done done in live action uh but yeah um but yeah honestly like uh the emperor's new groove i kind of feel like if they did that live action but added songs like yeah because i really feel like that story could like have really cool songs in it like it has one song but yeah yeah pretty sure it has one song i don't really think because a lot of disney songs have songs in the uh, end credits i don't really songs a lot of disney movies has songs in end credits i don't think the emperor's new groove has that but i think yeah having the emperor's new groove being live action but like adding more songs and i suppose yeah could just change a bit the 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 plot a bit but like not too much because it's a great movie but like i suppose change a bit and i think that could be fun i think that could be very much fun i think i think that would be very fun to see so i would be interesting in seeing that and then also yeah i'm one of those people that like, whenever i see someone um uh reposting a uh fan cast of atlantis the last lost empire i'm like yes like i think lots of those fan casts are so cool and yeah i really think doing a lot of action that will be very fun so i mean it was it will be very expensive but like you have avatar so you can do stuff like that it's not impossible and to do we do right so yeah uh, i think that is more or less it what kind of wanted to say today uh, and yeah as i said i'm going back I'm going back i'm going away uh well i'm going away sunday but like it's almost next week so i'm going away sunday or next week i'll be away for a little over a week so probably be reading some but i won't really be here well yeah, I said I might have pre-filmed some stuff, but now I'm thinking I probably won't do that. I might be in the comments, but like, I, I yeah, I won't have any new movies, new movies, new videos before like the, yeah, actually like the end of the month, like before like the last week of July, I'm thinking, because uh, I won't be back until the 22nd, and then, yeah, we'll see, but like, I won't have a new video uh, until that at the earliest. But yeah, yes. Uh, I hope you enjoy this long, longer video. So fun, nice one. Um, thank you, Hoping. And I hope you have a nice summery days. I mean, I suppose if you're in the northern hemisphere, it could be in Asia or Africa or Oceania, and then. It's winter for you guys, but yeah, I hope you have a nice day wherever you are. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to you soon ish. Bye.